Good evening. Um, welcome to Book Passage. We're going to get started in just a moment. Just a quick housekeeping note. Um, if anyone has a cell phone, may they please turn it to silent. Thank you. Um, we're just so thrilled to have you all come out on uh, the middle of the week and support your locally owned bookstore. <laughs> Elaine and I just had a conversation about this, so I just wanted to make sure I had it right. Um, so uh, Louisa Martin's daughter is going to be introducing her fabulous father. Hi. <laughs> so most of you know I'm Louisa Smith. I'm the buying director for Book Passage and and Martin's daughter. Um, an indecipherable notebook. A beautiful reporter's suicide. A mob boss's execution. Is the beginning of a new Arcadi Renko novel. And many of you who have attended previous Martin Crew Smith events here at Book Passage uh, by now know my shtick. I come out here, <laughs> say some incredibly wonderful things, all true, about his writing, and then reveal that I'm his daughter. <laughs> I have one story to tell, and I tell it faithfully. And I'm sure you're a little bit bored with it by now. I haven't heard it. <laughs> but that is not the case with Dad's writing. Every time he invents new mysteries for Arcadi to stumble upon, new tortures to suffer, and a new and completely wonderful novel to devour. Appropriate for someone who writes of the ever-changing sands that is Russian politics. The only thing that remains the same is the quality of the writing and the humor with which Arcadi observes all of this happening. If you have read the wonderful piece in the Times today, you also know the dad has had to, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Dad has had to reinvent the way that he actually writes the novel. <laughs> Parkinson's has taken away. Don't. <laughs> Parkinson's has taken away his ability to type. But Arcadi isn't the only character here who is stubborn, who approaches difficulties with humor. Instead of fingers on the keyboard, Dad perches on a stool and dictates to my mom, who supposedly faithfully translates all of this. <laughs> <laughs> and although we hear there are times where she refuses to type when she doesn't like what he's saying, <laughs> and I definitely think Arcadi is eating better than he ever has before. <laughs> This book is remarkable in many ways. But as we have established, this is my one story. And with these great novels, it's easy to tell it faithfully. Please welcome my father, Martin Christoph. Yeah. been a, uh, an interesting book to work on, to, uh, to be present at the creation of something besides, you know, the baby and you're delivering it and then occasionally you say over to, over to you to another doctor. And uh, I have had in this case uh, uh, a remarkable revelation which is that uh, uh, my, my wife, M, uh, can write a hell of a book. <laughs> I, I provided some prompting. <laughs> say you know, uh, you know, say something about. Uh, uh, I think we ought to have a little tension now. <laughs> I think he's I think he's eaten enough. <laughs> anyway, here I am. This is the first. This is the first stop of a multi-stop uh, tour 
but it's very nice to to, uh, to uh, be here with my friends and family. And I, it's hardly a face here that is unfamiliar to me. Huh. And uh, that is, uh, it's very nice to be able to say at my age, you know, to, to say that, boy, I can fill a room with friends. <laughs> Thank you. So what I'd like to do is, is, uh, is uh, do a little reading and then uh, do a little uh, talking about, uh, about what I read about the book. And then um, I really look forward to the, the part where you ask me questions because you, you may spark something that I haven't thought of. Uh, don't make me look too stupid. <laughs> but I, I, I enjoy these extrapolations, this sort of alternative world uh, kind of approach to, uh, to a story. And let me begin with the uh, Tatiana. Oh my god, it looks like Arkady's Ar Ar already trolling. I just have to open the book and he's, he's, uh, he's, in, he's in agony. <laughs> well, we just have to endure what we what we, what we need to Anya, his friend, made a terrible nurse. When she tried to cook, Arkady smelled food burning and heard her swearing in pots and pans. When she wrote in his apartment, he smelled her cigarettes and listened to her swear at, at her laptop. But he was surprised by Anya's patience. He would have expected her like a cat to move on. Although she had assignments, a fashion shoot, a photo essay on the mafia, she dropped in several times a day to see how he was. You'd miss me if I didn't, she said. You're a secret romantic. Arkady said, I'm a cynic. I believe in car wrecks, airline disasters, missing children, self-immolation, suffocation with pillows. What is it you don't believe in? I don't believe in saints. They get people killed. It's no big deal, Victor said when he visited. Seems to me that you're making a lot of fuss for a couple of busted ribs. What the devil is the matter? What the devil is the matter with you anyway? Punctured lung, Arkady said. A couple of days with the valve in his chest, and the lung would reinflate on its own. It's like visiting Our Lady of the Camellias. Do you mind? Victor held up a pack of cigarettes. For once, Arkady didn't crave one. So it's suicide, Victor said, or murder, Arkady said. No, Victor said. I heard it on the radio. Prosecutor determined that Tatiana Petrovna threw herself out her window. They say she was depressed. Of course she was depressed. Who isn't depressed? Anyone with eyes to see and ears to hear is depressed. The planet is depressed. That's what global warning is. <laughs> Arkady wished he had such insights. His mind was hung up in details. What are the neighbors? Who heard her scream? Screaming at what? Arkady felt pain lifters lift him up to a dull euphoria. He could tell when Genya is whose ungrateful ward had stopped by because the large chocolate chess piece wrapped in a piece in a, in a bow sat in his nightstand. Arkady was a light sleeper, but Jenny was as elusive as a snow leopard. A man confined to a few rooms becomes a meteorologist. Through the window pane, he charts clouds, tracks the, the stately passing of a thunderhead, notices the first streaks of rain. The bedroom wall becomes a screen on which he projects, what if? What if he had saved this woman, or been saved? A woman in this, a person in this situation welcomes the bash, the clash and bang of a storm. Anything to interrupt the review of his life. Arkady Kirillovich Krenko, senior investigator for very important cases, member of the Young Pioneers and a generation of guilty youth, and as luck would have it, an expert in self-destruction. His father, a military man, blew his head off. His mother, more genteel, waited herself with stones and drowned. Yeah. Arkady had dabbled in the act himself, but been distracted at a critical moment, and with what, and with that, his suicide fever had passed. Still, with all his exper experience and expertise, he considered himself a fair judge of suicide. He defended the honor of people who killed themselves, the commitment that suicide demanded, the isolation and sweat, the willingness to follow through and open a second bottle of sleeping pills or make a deeper slice across the wrist. They had earned the title, and he was offended by this imposture of murder as something it was not. Tatiana Petrovna would no more have killed herself than flown to the moon. When the tube was removed from Arkady's chest, the doctor said, we will put on a clean bandage and tape you up. The hole will heal itself. Your ribs will heal too, if you let them, 
no twisting, lifting, cigarettes, or sudden moves. Think of yourself as a broken cup. I do, Parkinson's. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me around to, uh, I haven't mentioned the, the circuitous way of, of uh, working, uh, what this book is about. And what it's in large part about is inspired, at least, by the life of uh, a woman, a, uh, a reporter named Anya Politskaya. And I swear I'll get this name right sometime. <laughs> Anya Politskaya, uh, a, a reporter, uh, a journalist in Moscow, and uh, one of the w most courageous uh, women in Russia, and someone who knew that in fact she was a marked woman for the for the the stories she would unearth, and including things like the uh, slaughter of the Beslan uh, school, the uh, sinking of the uh, of the cursed uh, submarine, and the uh, and the slaughter at the uh, Norris Theater in Moscow. Um, and it's very strange for me to, to do, it's, it's a difficult thing to do to, to honor somebody and, 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 and use them as inspiration at the same time. And I hope I've, I hope I've done her justice, or I certainly sincerely tried to. Arcadi's apartment was a battlement against the storm. Sometimes it sounded as if nature was laying siege against the city, as if black furies and Irish banshees were tearing up and down the streets. It was two in the morning and he was wide awake. For dinner he had eaten something greasy with bread and vodka. It occurred to him that quite possibly this might be his last case, that he might close his so-called career <coughs> chasing the anonymous dead, which served him right. He picked up a shoebox of audio cassettes he had taken from Tatiana Petrovna's apartment and fed one into his own re recorder. What, he wondered, did a saint sound like? He pushed play, and a woman's voice said, the bastards won't let me through. They did before. This time they won't. There are more than 300 children in the school, and this is the second day of the siege. I brought food and medical supplies and the chance to negotiate. The FSB doesn't want negotiations. In fact, the federal troops, the FSP, GRU, and OMM, OMON, sharpshooters, have been ordered further back from the school, farther away from any communication. It's not as if they had any plan apart from no negotiation with terrorists. If not negotiations, what? Without negotiations, there will be a slaughter of horrific dimensions. But is anyone from the Kremlin here? The Chechen leaders are no better. They could intercede with their brothers in the building. Instead, they remain silent. They will all remain silent as the slaughter of 300 children draws closer. By the end of the day, Arkady's throat was constricted and he discovered that his face was wet with tears. An unlit, forgotten cigarette was still in his hand. He screwed the cap back in the vodka bottle and tried another take. How does a man know when he becomes obsessive? Who can tell him except a friend? More specifically, how could two men like him and uh, Victor, the detective, cover one city, let alone two cities, hundreds of miles apart? He would need a dozen detectives and police dogs, none of which the prosecutor would authorize. All the prosecutor would support was a game of musical chairs in the morgue. At this point, if Tatiana had to move from drawer to drawer in the morgue, she would be light blue with a film of crystals. Perhaps the person hiding her was waiting for the first mantle of snow to lay her, her down properly when outrage was spent and she was just one saint out of many. The strange thing was that Arkady looked forward to listening to the other tapes, not because Tatiana's voice was especially mellifluous, but because it was clear, and not because the events she described were dramatic, but because she underplayed her part, and because listening to the tapes, he thought he knew her that they had met before. Was that obsessive? A poet wrote, the moon will float up in the sky, dropping the oars into the water, as ever Russia will get by, 
and dance and weep in every quarter. So nothing changes, Tatiana said in the tape. The poet Kisenin knew it a hundred years ago. Brushes a drunken bear, sometimes an entertainment, sometimes a threat, often a genius. But as night falls, always a drunken bear curled up in the corner. Sometimes in another corner lies a journalist whose arms and hands have been systematically been broken. The folks who do such work are meticulous. We don't have to go to Chechnya to find such men. You recruit them and train them and call them patriots. And when they find an honest journalist, they let the bear loose. Is it worth it? The problem with martyrdom is the waiting. Sooner or later, I will be poisoned or nudged off a cliff or shot by a stranger. But first, I will put a torpedo under their water line, so to speak. Also, why does heaven seem so dull? There's love in heaven, but is there passions? Do we really have to go barefoot and wear these robes? Are we allowed high heels? I've always envied women high heels. I'd like to spend my first thousand years in heaven learning to tango. In the meantime, I'll stay ahead of the bear as long as I can. It wasn't so much that he was listening to. It was more a sense of being alone with her. And if they were alone, he would have been so bold as to offer her a cigarette. <laughs> it takes me a while, but I know what I'm doing up here. <laughs> I, uh, I love this character, this, this, what I call Tatiana. She's just so involving and so direct, and she stirs uh, Arkady out of his, his out of his usual despair. His, he, you know, he takes she takes his overcoat of despair and and casts it aside. And she um, she takes over in a way. Not complete. Not now that I think about it, I could say the same about M. <laughs> One of the great books that I that I, I, I got recently was a book called I think it's the the art of Soviet cooking. <laughs> I, I did a little article in some other uh, some other uh, Russian books uh, in the Wall Street Journal this last weekend, and uh, and it, it's an interesting thing in that uh, there are good there are good recipes in there, uh, and it's got this. Uh, the same sort of strange combination that M can bring to, to my writing. She, as you know, if you if you read uh, any uh, piece in the, in the in the paper this morning, that the one caveat she 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 gave me for for typing out my entire book uh, was that I couldn't kill anybody, any children or dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so cats beware. <laughs> Uh, it was a. I, I, I find that one of the things, of course, that I, I love about doing the doing the person who's involved, like Cotty, is that uh, I really enjoy the humor, and it, it, it's as it's as uh, good now as as I, th I like to think it's ever been, and I because it's so necessary, it's so important that there be some uh, not leavening of the mood, but. It's a, it's a streak of gold in a, in a, you know, in a seam of a coal. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it makes everything come warm and alive. And, uh, it makes me a better writer. And I, you know, I, somebody has said that, uh, wrote a, a, a review this last weekend, I guess it was, saying that uh, I was like uh, Tom Clancy, but lighter. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I mean, you can do both. You can enjoy both, both styles. But, uh, <laughs> I don't think we've been confused. <laughs> At any rate, it, 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 it's great fun to be back. It's, and it's, and it's, a, it's a great treat to be here. And... Uh, I, I really hope that uh, 
one or two of you have rushed to the rushed bookstore and read the book rapidly and said to yourself, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, Alfred Hitchcock always, always despaired, what he called it, the, stair, the staircase question, that thing, but you really enjoy, you really enjoy it, a mystery. And, and only as you're going out the, uh, down the stairs out of the theater do you, do you ask yourself, wait a second, <laughs> she was dead. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I'm back. It's lovely to be here, and uh, I, I, I'd uh, more than entertain questions. I'd be, I'd be thoroughly dependent. It's like, like being dependent on the kindness of strangers. So please ask me some strange questions. <laughs> yes. How did you meet Arkady? Well, I went. I went to Moscow back in 1973, looking for somebody else. I'd gone there to, uh, to do a book about an American detective, sort of showed the Russians how it was done. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd, sold <laughs> I'd sold the premise to a publisher. And, I, and, I, and when I was in Moscow, it dawned on me, uh, it's one of the great obvious ideas I've ever had, maybe the only one, <laughs> that uh, I shouldn't be doing a story about an American detective in Russia, but a Russian detective in Russia, which involved a little bit more, a little more work than I, than I was accustomed to. Uh, but uh, and, and of course, everyone was horrified by it, most of all the publisher, because he he had he had paid for, you know, a, a American superhero, not some melancholy Russian. <laughs> So we, 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 we had a standoff for a while. I, I tried to buy it back. And he, uh, he wouldn't let me buy it back. And so I wouldn't give him any more pages. So it's fine. What, does, what power does the writer have? <laughs> Not much, but there is, there are, there is perversion. This one, you can withhold the, the story. And you can leave somebody. I love the idea of you know, taking somebody up in a, a Ferris wheel and saying, well, the rake's coming. I'll be back, you know, in an hour. <laughs> oh, this took not an hour, this took seven or eight years. Yes? After this one, are you likely to be allowed back into Russia again? Well, I, I, I was never... I mean, Do they give you a hard time? They gave me a hard time after Gorky Park. Uh, <laughs> because you, they, you could be arrested. You could go to prison for having uh, Gorky Park in your possession. Uh, but that, that eased off as, as, as everything else the eased off and then went to hell. Uh, and uh, I, 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 I just, I don't think I, they publish me now. <laughs> I regard that as an insult. <laughs> In other words, you can't please some people. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, so I'm, I'm published there now, but I'm, you can make, you can make, I'm not published in Japan. The reason there is that I mentioned the Japanese royal family in one of my books, in a book set in Japan. And, uh, and the, the Japanese publisher said, I, 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 if you do this, uh, they're going to cause trouble for the nationalists, and, uh, and I won't be able to publish you. I said, come on. We're all adults. <laughs> well, I haven't been published by the, by the Japanese in about the last four or five books. Because there, there, there are things you don't do, and you learn the hard way. Yes. Yes. Hey. Yes. Yes. Okay. I fell Before I pass. <laughs> I fell in love with Arcadi and Gorky Park, and I've fallen in love with your books ever since. Because I thought, my God, he knows a Russian sense of humor. How did he get that? How did he nail that? So, so. Completely. How did you in that first book? When you had been there for such a short time, the Russian sense of humor is wonderful. Well, if you don't, if you if you don't get it, and I don't know why I got it, I, so I, in a way I can't answer your question. Except that for me, it is one of the, the most important qualities. Uh, in the worst of circumstances, and sometimes you find the best humor, and the Russian. Russian comic writers are the funniest in the world, um, and, and the saddest. 
And you know, you have someone like Gogol, who did souls among other books, the, uh, the overcoat. And uh, he, uh, he was <coughs> in, 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 in incredibly funny, and, and, a, and he, he, he starved himself to death. Uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't very funny. <laughs> that was kind of the example I was looking for. <laughs> 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 oh, we're <laughs> Yes? How old is our caddy? Well, he, he ages differently. Than <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to say it was like two years to every three of ours. Um, but now I just say he's just. He's, he's just uh, on the fact that events pass for us, uh, we age. That doesn't mean that Cotty has to. <laughs> Where is it written? <laughs> so so I, 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 you know, I just let him uh, wander, off, wander off in, in his own, but he's got, he's got this different kind of, uh, as you either know or will soon learn. He's got um, he's got a different kind of time time bomb in, in himself, which is kind of interesting. I didn't realize this until I was too far in to do anything about it. Uh, Arcadi has a, a piece of a bullet in, in his skull, uh, which has started to move, and and is threatening. And it happened about the same time I was, uh, I was myself having a, this uh, deep brain stimulation and, uh, and uh, having uh, some electrodes put down inside my skull. So uh, in, a much, in a very unanticipated way, um, we did this together. And I, you know, so he, he has his time bomb. And, uh, I hope I don't have mine, but uh, close enough as far as I'm concerned. Yes? You said that you do all of your own research. Is that still true? And if so, tell us a little <laughs> bit about Tatiana research. Well, I, do, I, do, I do all my own research. Okay. But uh, I've got a, a, for example, we've been, Em and I have been um, researching uh, Venice. Actually, it wasn't that difficult to get her to agree to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, we have fun with it. We, it's a little bizarre from time to time. Like if I, 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 for uh, three stations, uh, Arkady went out to, I went out, and it gets, it gets confused. Uh, I, I went out to this very most dangerous part of Moscow called Three Stations. And I went with a friend of mine, a detective, and 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 their wives. And it, it gets so crazy. Uh, we locked our wives in the car and went off with <laughs> a patrol. And it seemed to us perfectly normal because it was research. <laughs> and 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 Em, who has yeah. who has been with me, God knows long enough. Uh, is no longer re you know, recoils from this anymore. Just, sometimes I, I we have very we have very bizarre kind of interviews with strange people, and I was just sitting there very nicely, right, making notes as, the, as we uh, as we come on, uncover some something very strange. Um, let's see, how far did I wander from the time? <laughs> <laughs> The question was about research for Tatiana. That sounds perfect. Okay, good. <laughs> yes? Hi, Phil. You used to alternate your books with one-offs between your archive mm -hmm. and archive books. Are you still going to do that? I'm doing it now. Even as, you, as I speak, and even as you see me speak. Uh, I'm, I'm doing something now which is going to be totally different. And uh, I, I, I have to. It's not a good career move, I can tell you that. Because people only think, they think of you as, oh, this is Mark Smith, and oh, he does that too? <laughs> and they're unhappy quite often. They say, I won't read it. I'm loyal to our <laughs> um, which is a Which is a, a, 
a sad uh, affair. Um, but I, but I, I, I feel that I owe our party a little rest from time to time. <laughs> yes. I know how private you are. Why did you decide to go public just now with your audiences? Well, it was becoming, uh, you know, I thought it was very unfair for him to, to do all the work. I mean, she, she, she typed out this manuscript. I, all I did was sit there and talk. Uh, but it just, just and when I say, I say something maybe five or ten times before I get it right. And then I go back again. This takes a, a degree of patience the human, humans are not known for. Mm -hmm. But, and so Anne Am Am has an escape route, in which is that she's got a stack of the old New Yorkers this side. And do you ever wonder what to do with them? your stack? <laughs> 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 Well, read them <laughs> while somebody else very slowly <laughs> dictates a story. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, uh, I had this uh, deep brain stimulation when all else failed. And, uh, and I discovered that hardly anybody else seemed to know about it. And this struck me as, as pretty crazy. I mean, the people. There, there, there are people who recoil at the idea. I do myself. You know, of, uh, going into the brain, I keep a lot of my best secrets there. <laughs> and uh, but I thought that you know that this was not right. That more people should know about this because it is. I think, and I've heard, I've heard it said by other people about the most hidden of diseases. Everybody says, oh yeah, my uncle, my father, my mother, uh, you know, had it, but you know, she, hid, she hid it, he hid it, I hid it for 15, 16 years. And I didn't want anybody else uh, feeling they had to hide. Yes? Can you talk a little bit more about the change in the, the process of writing from typing it out or handwriting it, how we used to do it? And Dictating it, I, I can't imagine doing that myself. I couldn't either. I, couldn't. So I, I also could not imagine writing without smoking. Um, I could not write, but you know, I couldn't imagine writing without my Smith Corona. But so how did? But so every you, you're constantly changing, uh, and you just I just would take a long time to admit it. But it is very strange because you have to. You've got to think through what you're, what you're going to say a little bit more. But it was remarkably <coughs> unchanged um, because, it, frankly, I had no choice. It really comes down to that: you can do it or don't. Go away. You know, if you really, if you really aren't going to try, uh, then you will feel like you feel like a failure because you are one. Because you, you betrayed yourself. So, how did it work? Did you feel? Did it take a long time to kind of master that different way of doing it? Well, <coughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, anyway, I, I I really don't know the answer to that. Someone would have to observe me. Someone would have to sort of uh, little cage that assigns it Homo sapien. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, observe how we take away this from him, and then observe how we take away that from him. And what he's, Oh, you know, he's, he's still plugging away in there. <laughs> and that's what I do, I plug away. Can we take one more question? Yes. I was in Russia in September, and we had several really young uh, guides. Um, we were all thinking of leaving Russia, um, trying to get jobs um, in uh, Brazil for the 2016, uh, Olympics mm -hmm. and any other thing that they could come up with and I was wondering if um, you think this is <coughs> a growing trend or whether you know this was just an aberration that I I think this happens with every Olympics <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, it, I'd go if I were that age you know. um, well they, they, they were despairing because also, the, the inability to speak out. Well, being, the being, afra to speak being, out. A, being afraid to speak out. Mm -hmm. 
they could they said they could speak to us because we were passing through and had no power mm -hmm. but if they were to say the same thing and a group of Russians and stuff they could be interested. There, there have been people who've been saying this sincerely uh, heartfelt in a heartfelt way for as long as Russia is one of the great uh, great sort of pilgrim nations in that you have more people trying to leave mm -hmm. than perhaps any other place on earth. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I was about to say, except for the Philippines, God, God bless them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but they, 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 uh, there's, nothing to, there's nothing to say except, uh, you know, I, I, I hesitate to, 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 to get involved with with this too much because I, I've encountered it again and again and, uh, and had some really sad experiences. Uh, people who came with, you know, came here with great expectations. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing to meet your, to meet your dream sometimes. Mm -hmm. Give me one more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. Man, man, looks like a sea captain in the back. Russia for some years now. You've basically working out so your wife is banned as well. Whither I goest. Thank you.